Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I gotta admit, I got up this morning, had no idea what I wanted to do today, but I was kind of just bouncing around the internet and I came across something that somebody mentioned to me, oh, a couple months ago that would be an interesting place to vlog. And that's called the Mayborn Museum. Now the Mayborn Museum is actually a division or an offshoot of Baylor University. Yep, those guys again. Uh, apparently what they've been doing is since uh, about the 1850s, Baylor University has been collecting like cultural and geological and bioscience uh, artifacts for, for, for the purpose of uh, teaching their students. And it got to the point where there was so much of this stuff that they had to actually put it into a museum. And so that is what the Mayborn Museum is. It actually opened in 2004, but like I said, the collection has been uh, accumulating for 150 years and it looked really fascinating. So let's go take a look at that. I think that's gonna be fun. All right, we're here and I'm actually more excited actually having seen the place now because uh, when you get here, this isn't some little teeny tiny rinky dink museum. This is quite a facility here. It just goes on and on and on and on. I don't know, we may get more than one vlog out of this. Apparently they're doing a section on like the moon landing here because they get this big image of the moon uh, and uh, pictures of where all the landing sites are. Very cool. And of course you can't have a museum of any type without a gift shop. Yeah, we'll check that out a little later. So first thing you see when you get in here is this massive model railroad here. And the trains are running. Yeah. All right, I've seen these things before. These things simulate the, uh, the simulate a tornado here. Basically, what they've got is a big fan that's sucking uh, air upward here, and then uh, eventually, as, as time uh, occurs here, the uh, start forming a little tornado here. It starts spinning. You can see with something just as little as that how how powerful that's got the potential to be. So in May of 1953 there was a tornado that blew through Waco here and this is like a before picture and an after picture that shows kind of the damage that was done. And then uh, a lot of this stuff here is like uh, stuff that was uh, found that got lost in the tornado. They got a little miniature replica, it looks like of the Liberty Bell. It's actually got a clacker in it, so I'm not gonna actually rock it because it's probably loud. So in this little room, they have a little section on uh, different simple machines like pendulums and that kind of stuff. I love stuff like this. I remember this when I was a kid. We used to go to the Ruben H. Flute Museum in San Diego and they'd have all sorts of stuff like this you could play around with. This I probably is where I kind of learned uh, to, to love science the way I did. Nice illustration of a lever here where you can uh, lift what looks like about 15 pounds with hardly any, any force whatsoever on this end. And then this is, of course, an illustration that if the if the lever point isn't uh, set right, the pivot point isn't right, then it's a lot harder to do it because it's with the handle being a lot shorter here, it uh, requires more force to make the uh, lift the weight. So this is a weird little uh, 3D reality, uh, virtual reality thing that allows you to interact with different dinosaurs. cool. A lot of what I've seen so far seems to be encouraging kids to kind of learn by picking up and manipulating things. Everything kind of seems to be designed with that in mind. Teach kids how to tell time. Let's see if we can get this Jacob's ladder to work here. Oh yeah. That's cool. Kind of a cool model that explains how uh, they can use wind power to generate electricity. 
the more wind, the faster the turbine spins and the more electricity is generated and more lights come on. See, even the stuffed kitties in the museum love their shelves. Hey, I can be a blue man group. So the whole place is designed for kids to kind of play with it and experiment here. This is kind of cool. Uh, it's just basically a guitar with a guitar string stretching all the way down to the floor. And if you spin this thing, and then, I don't know if you can see it on the, on the camera, but it's actually creating sine waves of the... Uh, Yeah, that's kind of cool. Right, so this is kind of cool. Use a little crank to uh, move the ball up to the top. And then when the ball gets to the top. In case you ever wanted a stringless harp that was run with lasers, we got one here. Wow, this is almost like being in a fun house. So this table is kind of cool. They got a laser that comes out of here, comes out of right here, and then you use a bunch of mirrors to redirect the laser light around, hopefully with a goal of hitting that target over there. See if I can hit the target. So what I did is I made it shine onto this one, shine onto that one, shine onto that one, shine onto that one, back onto this one, and then about the closest I can get to the target is there because the thing doesn't line up properly. This thing's like a light bright here. You pull the pegs out, put them in, and they light up sometimes. They don't all work, I guess, but. I'm guessing what this thing is, it's just a plate of uh, material that glows in the dark. And since it's dark in here, it doesn't really do much. But if you wiggle the plate around, you can create really cool little patterns here. Yeah, I don't know, is that a better me? Or is that? Am I just exaggerating how bad really things are? So this thing's kind of fun too. This is called an air vortex cannon. And basically what they got is they got that uh, streamer stuff hanging from the ceiling. And what you do is you punch this thing and uh, air is shot out of the little hole here. And since uh, the diameter of the hole is a lot smaller than the diameter of the drum on the back, it creates a huge uh, column of air that will go up and hit that thing. Watch. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, they got a train running up along the ceiling in here too. That's pretty cool. Oh, and this is the most amazing thing of all. Oh wait, they're just vending machines. Never mind. We have an ice cream making machine, which is kind of cool. Dispenses everything. You got all your toppings over here. The cup is over there. More toppings over here. All right, so that was the Discovery Center. Let's go look at the natural history exhibits. Flashback to our Mammoth Museum uh, tour here. We got a big, massive mammoth head sitting on the ceiling. You really don't get the get the idea from looking at the picture, but that's probably those horns are probably ten feet long. They don't really say what this guy is, but looking at the bones and looking at the teeth and the shape of the head, I'd say this is some sort of an elephant. Only it isn't your typical elephant because he's only about three feet tall. But, I mean, you can even see the horns coming in there. The tusks. I think that's definitely an elephant. That looks like some sort of a cat. It's a big one though. 
Maybe that's Flash's cousin. Who knows? That's an armadillo all rolled up into a ball. That's kind of a defense mechanism. Some really cool mineral specimens here. Unfortunately, they don't identify what they are, so it's hard to tell. And that's an old shark's tooth, a fossilized shark's tooth. That guy looks like an ostrich. I'm assuming that's what that is, but he's about seven feet tall, so... That is one big ostrich. Yeah, I just saw an identification plate that is some sort of an ostrich that was nor uh, native to North America. And that, you really can't even get a bearing on how tall that is. That ceiling is 20 feet up there. That is the skull of a humpback whale. Absolutely massive. Haven't had the misfortune of running into any of those in the wild yet, but we saw a few of those at the Cameron Zoo the other day. And a skeleton of a bat. Some more cool mineral specimens here. Unfortunately, they don't name a whole lot of them, so it's hard to tell exactly what they are. And I think that's an ostrich egg. It's a little larger than a softball. Yeah, I wouldn't want to lay one of those. Cross section of a tree that died in what 1934 was 177 years old at that time. You can kind of tell a lot from the uh, from the tree rings. You can tell whether it was a wet wet year or a dry year. See, so they got little buttons you can push for each of them. So this one comes on here uh, if you press for wet years. So that kind of shows. I guess these were more wet years at this point. So these are pliosaur dinosaur fossils. Basically it was a big ocean dwelling thing that looked like a giant alligator with fins. Closely related to the plesiosaur, which uh, if you've ever followed your uh, Loch Ness Monster lore, there's a lot of people that think that maybe if the Loch Ness Monster is real that it's actually a plesiosaur. You can see it, but that's a dinosaur footprint. Just for reference, that's my hand. And that's one toe here, another toe over here, and a third toe here, and then that's, of course, the heel back here. So this thing's massive. supposedly what it looks like. It's a little dark in here, so I apologize for that. And the worst thing you can do walking around this place is not look up. <laughs> There's all sorts of greatness, things like that. Okay, that's cool. That is a 75 million year old turtle fossil. This thing is absolutely massive. Obviously, that was a sea turtle of some sort, as opposed to a land uh, version. And here we have kind of a model of some of the life uh, that existed in the area, or that exists in the area sort of right now. I think these are all relatively recent creatures here. Got a snake down there. Something looks sort of like a, a falcon with that, with that head and that beak. And a rabbit back there being chased by some sort of a cat. See all sorts of things just kind of lurking around in here. So once again, a little bit more about the Mammoth Museum here. These are just casts uh, rather than actual bones from the, from the, uh, from the animals here, but it's kind of cool. You get the glass that you can walk around on top of it, so you can get right up to it. More local examples of the wildlife from the area. The turkey back there. And a bear. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. So I just learned something interesting. Uh, the town of Waco was named after a subgroup of the Wichita Indians that called themselves the Waco Indians. And this is the uh, model of one of their homes.
Very nice. That's a Texas Longhorn. That's one big cow. Not one you'd want to get in a fight with either, I'm guessing. No matter what, you're going to lose. So as you approach this thing, uh, once you uh, fill up some of the, the shapes on the screen, it uh, creates music for you. And now we're kind of into the space section here. Uh, a couple of uh, pressure suits for the astronauts. They don't really say what they are, but they appear to be like Apollo era. You can even see my reflection in there. That's scary. Now this is a later version of the uh, spacesuit. This uh, still says Apollo. And this one it actually says there's a patch on it. It says Apollo 19. So there you go. Most of this room is filled with these simulators uh, that allow you to pretend that you're the astronaut. And you get to control the, uh, the rocket at all stages of the launch. I tried it on my own. It was pretty interesting. Okay, I'm looking at it closer now, and it's actually, each one of them is a different ship. USS Venture. But this whole room is just filled with these simulators. It's really geared towards uh, kids, you know, just kind of going around and who like to push buttons and things like that. That's cool. This is like a re recreation of the record that was put on the uh, Voyager 1 and 2 spacecrafts. I believe on the flip side there's actually a recording that you can play. I guess when you get over to this side of the, uh, of the exhibit, this is more like the uh, type of vehicles that you'd be driving around, like on the moon or on a foreign planet. That's cool, get to try the whole thing here. So on this one they let you, uh, I guess, uh, pretend to be the navigator. So let's try that and see what happens. What do you think? Let's go to Mars. Mars would be fun, right? Yeah. Sure, what the heck. Well, that's no good. I just crashed into the sun. There we go. Now I think we're maybe going to actually achieve Martian orbit. There we go. Made it into orbit. Alright, it only took me 50 tries and probably 300 astronauts to die. Hey, you know, gotta give me a break. Those of you that didn't like the snakes at the Cameron Zoo, you know, maybe this is more your speed. Look at all the stuffed animals that you can get. Buy me, buy me. It's Flash again. Some kind of cool geodes that you can get. A little too pricey for my uh, needs right now, but I kind of like all this uh, sciencey stuff too here that you can get. Teach kids about, you know, robotics and physics and magnetism and all sorts of fun stuff here.
And of course, you can't go to any space-themed museum without being able to buy astronaut ice cream and moon cheese. I don't even want to know. And a space lollipop, whatever that means. Some kind of cool fossils in here. So they just did a funny announcement over the PA a minute ago, said that the uh, museum is going to be closing in about 15 minutes, and anybody left in the museum afterward would be fed to the uh, plesiosaur. So yeah, it sounds like a good reason to get out, huh? So I hope you enjoyed that. This was kind of fun for me. I know it was kind of geared more towards children. I was a little unexpected, but I still had a good time, and I hope you enjoyed it too. So thanks as always for watching, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night, everyone.